Iran's nuclear deal was signed at a time when the country's political risks were high and economic income and investment into financial corporations were limited. It's been over a year since the deal, which is also known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, was implemented. During that period, there have been big changes in Iran's economy. The reconnection of, of Iran to the, uh, to the banking system is obviously a very major step, but there's still a long way to go. I mean, the, the, the relationship is improving. We see that we can start building up on the, on, on the future. In some cases, we are facing some problems. Uh, so we are working on, on, on these ones, but as I said before, not everything is solved today. So we still have room for improvement. Under the deal, over 90% of nuclear-related sanctions were lifted. Among the most important to go were secondary sanctions on the central bank and Iran's commercial banks selling oil, investing in oil and gas projects, transportation, shipping lines and the commercial aviation industry. The nuclear deal gave us a good opportunity to sign new contracts with foreign companies, he says. Fortunately, Iran Kodra used this opportunity and was the first to sign a contract, and we all saw that it came into force last week. Following the nuclear deal, Iran is now seeking investment in different sectors. On the other hand, this deal has made countries and companies think of resuming their commercial ties with Iran. France has stabilized its presence there. Automakers Renault and Peugeot are manufacturing products there, as well as selling them in Iran. Airbus was able to sign an 18 billion euro contract with the country, and Italy and Germany have a presence there. I think France comes first and Germany stands second. However, the French sell their products, especially cars now, and Airbuses have been delivered too, he says. These are two important things which have happened. Also, Italian planes are being delivered to Iran this week. These are very important cooperations, he says. The embargoes caused a gap in economic cooperation in Iran and around the world. Restoring ties takes time so that all sides can wipe away any negative effects of sanctions and prove their constructive presence in economic growth. Although companies with a background in Iran may have been able to start work sooner than others, other companies with less familiarity with Iran's market need a little more time. We need nothing more than the nuclear deal, he says. We believe that business conditions should be facilitated for both sides under contract. However, this has not happened. We are after the non-zero sum model for all, and Iran should benefit from that. For example, a car manufacturer should not find itself in the situation of setting up in Iran, but not being able to transfer its money, he says. International oil companies are showing an increasing interest in Iranian oil and gas. They know the potential for oil investments and projects here is huge. Some experts say that Iran has not been successful in attracting capital so far. However, an international fund report predicts that Iran will experience a faster non-oil sector economic growth with direct foreign investment.